everyone. I am Dr. Sumana Gurunath and I am a consultant in infertility and IVF at Cloud9 Fertility Malaysia Branch, Bangalore. Greetings on the occasion of World Fertility Day. So the number of infertile couples in India is huge, accounting for nearly about 2% of the entire population. That amounts to as many as 20 to 25 million infertile couples. Some of these will eventually need IVF, but unfortunately it is known that just half of these actually access treatment and medical care. Now, this is mainly because of their fears, their misconceptions and uh, un unfounded uh, myths which we are here to dispel today. We must remember that IVF is one of the most successful treatments for infertility. It is the final and the most promising treatment for almost all the major causes of infertility today such as polycystic ovaries, blocked fallopian tubes, low sperm counts, low egg numbers, endometriosis, unexplained infertility and so on. The success rates of IVF depend upon many factors. The first and the foremost is the age of the woman. So the younger you are, the more likely that the treatment is likely to work. The egg reserve, how many eggs you have. So the younger you, ha you are, the more number of eggs that you have, the more likely the IVF will work. The duration of your marriage. So the longer you are married, the less likely the success rates. The factor causing infertility. Certain factors such as unexplained infertility and polycystic ovaries are more likely to work. Embryo quality. So a healthy egg and a healthy sperm will give rise to a healthy embryo and this enhances the success rates. Also other lifestyle factors such as smoking and obesity are known to reduce success rates in IVF. So if we look at success rates from all over the country, so roughly a woman who is less than 35 years has a success rate of about 40 to 45 percent per cycle. And once a woman goes over the age of 40, it drops down to as low as less than 20 percent. So this is in fresh IVF cycles. In frozen cycles, the success rate is a little higher. It is around 50 to 60 percent per transfer. Also, people have a lot of concerns about IVF. They think that it's risky, it's complicated. And uh, so it's because of this that many of them may not access treatment. But we have to remember that IVF is by far quite safe. The complications are rare, especially in expert hands. And of course, the most important complications of IVF, that is ovarian hyperstimulation and multiple pregnancy are largely preventable. Ovarian hyperstimulation is a condition where the woman produces a lot of eggs. The hormone uh, levels tend to be quite high and this leads on to a host of other complications. So today it is very easy to predict the occurrence of ovarian hyperstimulation and we have modified IVF protocols which can be used because of which we can almost achieve an OHSS free clinic. So I am proud to say that we are one of them. Multiple pregnancies such as triplets and quadruplets are no longer considered to be success in IVF. So these can be easily prevented by limiting the number of embryos that we are transferring to not more than two. So by doing so, by transferring only one or two embryos, we are able to maintain good success rates at the same time completely eliminate higher order multiple pregnancies and I must say that in our clinic we don't transfer more than two embryos and we don't have any IVF generated triplets since inception. So the main message here today is that if you have been advised IVF, don't shy away from it. The earlier you access treatment, the more likely that it will work. So don't delay your fertility treatment.